Brilliant. Hello again, Emily. So um, Emily actually um, had to talk at Product Drive, um, the first edition of Product Drive. So welcome again. But you know, for for those of our viewers that haven't you know seen your previous talk and that don't know about you, like if you could tell us a few words about yourself, um, basically where where you're coming from, how you made it to product management, and what you do in your day job. Uh, that's going to take a <laughs> it's what I do in my day job, so I'll keep that short. But yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, Emily, as you heard, um, I am, uh, well, I'm a Swede living in Berlin since a few years, and I've been living abroad forever, so it's, it's been, it's, um, I'm, I'm an exiled Swede, I guess. Mm. Um, and I came into product management, as a lot of us do, by accident, uh, but also nowadays a lot of people are really wanting to get there. So I find it super interesting, that whole journey. But I, so I've been working at Outfittery since many, many years now, seven years. Started as a stylist, and then I moved my way towards product where I ended up, where I've been now for the last four years. As a stylist? Yeah. Wow, that's, that's an exciting journey. How did you decide you want to move into product management then? Well, I, so, I mean, I was a stylist and then I was a team lead and then I worked in quality assurance and then a lot of things around it. And then I started to work with the tech department as a stylist um, because we were working on making the tools better for, for, for me then. And then when the product manager that I was working with, she was like, hey, this is a good idea. Do you want to step in and do my job? Um, and that was a good idea. I had a lot of time. I had so much fun. And it was a very steep learning curve in the beginning, um, coming from a non-technical background, but knowing um, the user flow better than, than the tech people at that point, knowing the customers that I needed to serve and what I needed as then the user of the tools. So it was, um, it was very, very, very interesting first couple of months, so to say, to, to also get into the tech and talking and getting to know how everything is working. Yeah, that, that's, that's super interesting, actually, this journey from, you know, like the non-technical, more like customer perspective into product management. And um, this kind of leads us on to the, the topic of your talk, which is like, well, quite mysterious, finally time to think. Yeah. Um, and I feel like this is something that it has been resonating with a lot of speakers of this year's edition I don't know what it is maybe it's the pandemic that we all had you know like such a hard time just staying in all the time and in front of our laptops and probably working like twice as much as usual um, at least that's my experience for sure um, so you know we probably didn't take that much time to think and I noticed in a number of you know the topics or in the pre-interviews that i've had with the speakers that a lot of them mention that product managers often focus on the outputs so much that they don't really have the time to think about the problems enough and about the customer perspective and like what is the actual need right was the actual problem that the product is supposed to solve not the other way around like what features we need to build basically you know to make the product more competitive or not um, so if you could tell us a bit more about like basically what inspired you to um, well create a presentation on this specific topic like yeah what is your experience with, with this? Um, well yeah I think well I think no I think that was actually what happened to me though is that I did get some time to think last year um, I did work odd hours and weird hours, but we also went to Kutzarbeit here in, in Germany. So my days were shorter, but spread out and weird. But I, I was really trying to, to, to get myself time to think. Mm. Um, during this time, I also studied to become a coach. So I, that is a lot of kind of how to facilitate thinking and how to help and unlock other people's thinking. And for me, that was kind of then like, ah, wait, <laughs> should I, with all of my different hats as a product manager, which I hate that expression and it's the worst expression, but this is what we're told, like a product manager needs to do all of these things. But facilitate thinking was never really something that at least I 
didn't really occur. There were no, no other product managers around me that was really into this. We do design sprints and we do all of these things that are supposed to encourage thinking as, and they do a lot of them. But then if you look at the normal kind of scrum rhythm and the normal kind of day to day business, there's no time for it because we also, we don't really give the time for it. So with this kind of added piece to my, to my, to my life that comes into coaching and how to actually facilitating and reading a lot about thinking and how the brain works. And, and I mean, I talked about stress in my last talk, and this is also something that comes in here and how that hinder, hinders thinking and how we can help to unlock it. Um, so that's the baseline for, for the talk is all, all, it's a bit about like how, how the reality looks and where we have spaces in our day-to-day -day life as product manager to actually slow down a little bit and make people actually get the time to think for example, knowing that you're not going to be interrupted helps you think better. Mm. Um, and that we do this with our customers, right? So when the customer is interviews, we will talk to customers and we want them to just, we just want to drag everything out of them. And we, we try to do that with open questions and everything. But then we have conversations with our developers and then we are just like, let's get to the fastest solution. How do we make it quick? How do we make it then? How fast can we deliver? Da, da, da. So it's a different pace. Um, so I will try to be more practical than I normally am in my talks. I'm quite, quite uh, philosophical usually, but in this talk, I will try to give very practical, hands-on things that we can do to facilitate thinking in our uh, teams and in, in the product teams and in our companies. Why is it so important, you know, to facilitate this creative thinking in product teams? Because um, I actually saw a survey today on LinkedIn um, that was asking this question. I think it was um, from Carlos, who's like the CEO of Product School, right? So he's also one of our speakers, actually. Um, and he asked if product management is art or science or like 50-50. And um, so, you know, like, yeah, why, why is creative thinking important for product management? I somehow think it's a pre-scientific, you know, like organized activity that follows like a strict pattern. Where does the creativity come in? Well, the brain needs to, uh, to flow to be able to think as well. We need to, we need to pass certain, um, how would I say it, like uh, comfort zones. We need to do that to be able to move into seeing something new. And we can take this even like how the brain and the brain pattern is working. Our brains are pretty lazy. Usually we're working um, in, in like a very reactive mode in our brain. And in that reactive mode, don't want to think in complex new solution. It's just like, hey, I kind of know this. I'm going to take that road and that's it. Meanwhile, if you move past this, either if it's creating that environment or if you're able to to calm down and, and de-stress yourself, if that would be something that you need personally for yourself, then you start to open up new ways of thinking and new ways of seeing things that might even be better and then the first ones because you were just blocking yourself in it. And this goes for everybody, not just a product manager, but developers as well. I mean, taking a break, sleeping on it, all of these things that we've been told. Mm -hmm. So what are the consequences of like, you know, not taking the time to think and just rushing to, to ship new, you know, product features? Well, I've taken that for once. I think that's something that just keeps growing because you never mm -hmm. think about the next step in it. But then also innovation. I mean, I think that we're blocking ourselves in innovation and smart solutions because we're, we're thinking about the easy solution comparing to the smart solution. And, and those might be the exact same thing, but quite often they're not. It's just an easy fix versus a, a sustainable uh, long-term building. Um, so that will be the main parts that I've seen and that I, that I that also need to struggle with because mm -hmm. I made a decision quickly two years ago and I'm like, oh, that wasn't very good. <laughs> it happens, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And what happens, you know, if you feel like if you're feeling burnt out or, you know, you're feeling like uh, a bit low on sort of uh, creative juices and enthusiasm, do you have like any techniques that you use to help yourself get out of this funk? Or? I do, well, I mean, I do. I do, of course. Yes. And I will bring some of them up in the talk. So I don't mm. want, I don't want to uh, spoil the, yeah. 
the background of it. But then again, one thing, and this is from, from my other talk, and this I bring with me to, to every day, and that is to take three breaths very consciously. Mm -hmm. It sounds simple, it might sound anything, but that helps us to, to get into to, uh, our rest and digest nervous system instead of getting into the other one. Um, but then as a general, also taking the time, because it's, it's um, laughable almost, when you look at all of this, uh, at all of the, our ceremonies within the scrum cycle, where we have, so we have all of these things where we're supposed to sit together and talk and come up with good solutions and align on things. That's essentially what we're doing in these meetings. And we're making sure that everything is on track and that we can help each other out. But to have a grooming session where everybody is not involved in, in the thinking process, it's not really beneficial. We're wasting people's times or we're stressing through things and we're getting it. So we have all of these meetings in place and ceremonies in place that we could use to facilitate them even better, I would say, or be a part of as a product manager um, as in, the, in the long run, I would say. Mm. Right, right, gotcha, yeah. So hmm, it makes me kind of wonder like if um, the fact that we often have a lot of resources, right, like I know companies get a lot of funding and stuff, it kind of stunts creativity, like this real resourcefulness in the sense of, well, being able to really think how to resolve a specific problem, you know, as economically as possible, not only in terms of, of money but also in terms of like the time resources the people human resources etc etc so you sometimes see these massive bloated products that they use this only use like 10 20 percent of catering to like 10 different personas because well so what the company can afford it right they got like 50 million in vc funding and now they're just rushing to build things um basically yeah to, to kind of yeah even use the funding and to generate this kind of artificial growth so like what do you think would be a better approach for product companies not to fall into this build trap mm -hmm. oh, i wish i had one answer to this though. <laughs> one liner yeah, that's a complex question right um well it is a different difficult topic for sure because this is also the economy is what it is and then capitalism is what it is and this is everything is essentially what we have out here out the door i have a personal belief in that we should try to be sustainable and that we should try to build things that that last and that maybe not encourage people to buy things like crazy and or building these things that make thing, make people think and all of these all of these topics but those are rather outside of what i can do as a product manager at, at this point um, but in terms of trying to build things that generate value you need to talk to your customers and I mean that is that's the essential thing and if you don't leave that space to talk to your customers and also within those conversations generate thinking mm -hmm. because just I mean having a dead end user interview with the customer doesn't help if you are thinking that you have, you already have the solution to the problem or you're just doing it because you're supposed to have user interviews um, and, and not doing it in the very open-minded way that you can do as a, or should do, I'm gonna say in the user interview, um, then you're also kind of just doing things for show and then it doesn't really matter what, whatever you build in the end if, if the purpose is not to, to build something that is actually user needed or user focused. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I often catch myself, you know, like stopping myself from doing things just kind of for the sake of doing them, you know, and uh, appearing busy or feeling like, okay, I need to, I need to like, um, publish something to this channel and I need more of this and more of that. And sometimes thinking like, okay, um, but am I actually able to do it well enough for this action to produce uh, the outcome that we want, right? Um, but you know like i'm also guilty of that and sometimes we feel like maybe a little bit stressed about like what the execs or the management or whoever else involved will think of us if we're not you know like constantly producing so yeah yeah like um, 
Well, we were also ourselves putting that pressure on us as a product manager. Yeah. Like, oh my God, I have, we have, like, we're down, we're late with a release, or I haven't done any really fun feature recently, or the user research didn't actually lead to what I hoped it would lead to. Mm. And so there's, there's a lot of pits that we might fall in, but at the end of the day, I think also having, have, like creating environments when we are allowed to think we, and as well as our team, and as well as cross team functional, also creates a culture that is more creative and essentially will, will inspire more new things. And then there might be a little gap when you're not creating just output, 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 but you would, however, create something that then will have a steadier flow because you have, you've gotten your thinking kind of in line with the rest and kind of the rest of the company and the rest of, of whomever you need to be thinking with as well. So I think that there is definitely a, a rhythm change that happens, but I think at, at the end of the day, if you make sure that there is a free thinking space within your company and with your product team and with your tech and developers, if they are able to think and you talk about it and you communicate, then at the end of the day, I think the innovation and the output will actually be more because you're kind of drawing it back and the qualitative thing will be, will be better. Mm. And you will need to kill fewer features at the end of the day. <laughs> so the ones that were kind of rushed into production and like turned out nobody wants them really. Um, we, uh, we had this, come up over and over again. So Vasgan Babayan, a senior product manager at Adobe, who's actually kind of like a serial feature killer. The, his basically main job is to actually remove the features that, you know, were a mistake, basically. Yeah. They were um, under-researched or for whatever reason, they're not being really used. Um, and then um, we had a chat with Nir Ayal last week, actually. Um, probably you've heard of him, the author of Hooked, right? And um, he said, like, a lot of companies are pushing these chocolate coated broccoli onto their users. So they are like trying to dress things up and like coat it with something sweet, right? But it's still something that the users ultimately don't want. Yeah. And, um, it's like a really, really short sighted strategy to, yeah. to salvage things that were just not, you know, what was wanted in the first place. Yeah. Um, this sounds like a super, super interesting presentation and I'm really excited to, to hear it. Um, mm -hmm. I think it dovetails so nicely into like the overarching theme of um, this year's product drive, which should be probably less is more. Um, <laughs> So yeah, um, it's brilliant to, to talk to you and yeah, I'm looking forward to the presentation. So do I. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day, Emily. You too. Bye. Bye.